Recently, there's been a lot of debate online as to whether guitar pickups actually make a substantial difference to a guitar player's guitar tone. It's no secret that guitar tone is made up of a bunch of different things with some having more of an effect than others. Whether that be pickups or the guitar or the amp or the cabinet or the player themselves, most importantly. However, to even suggest that guitar pickups have little to no substantial effect on a guitar player's guitar tone is absolutely ridiculous. I'm so tired of seeing this sentiment online mainly from people who really exercise the notion that guitar companies are just out there to get you and they're just out there to get you to spend your hard-earned money, which in some cases is definitely true, but for pickups, in relation to the idea that they won't make a difference to your guitar tone, absolutely rubbish. I think the internet is far too fixated on that immediate objectiveness that happens when you change a guitar pickup. You know, that instantaneous difference of swapping different pickups in the same guitar and how that will look and sound on a tonal and EQ spectrum. I'm going to attend to translate how certain sets of pickups and the way that they're made and the way that they're constructed will leave an everlasting impact on how a guitar player physically plays their instrument, which will then result into having an everlasting impact on that guitar player's guitar tone over time. Today, I wanna to present my side of the discussion and that's exactly what this video is gonna be. It's gonna be a discussion. There's gonna be no pickup shootout. There's gonna be no EQ graphs. If you wanna see a video like that for the millionth time, I highly suggest that you go check out Keith Merrow's video from back in the day, probably like eight years ago at this point still stands the test of time it's a great pickup comparison and you can also check out sonic drive studios for a more recent edition that one's really good as well and side note if you watch those videos and still can't hear the differences between those pickups my genuine honest advice to you is to focus more on training your ears to hear those differences before you comment on this video and tell me that i don't know what i'm talking about and in case you're thinking it already no, this video is not a coping mechanism to justify my purchases of high-end pickups and high-end gear. Because to be completely honest and transparent, I am aware enough to recognize that I am in an extremely unique and privileged position as you know, a guitar artist and a social media content creator. And I can accept and recognize the fact that I haven't actually been in the position to purchase pickups for myself in a little while. However, with that being said, that should only help the case in point that I'm trying to make in this video, as there's been practically no monetary or sentimental attachment to my preferences or any other sort of contractual obligations attached to the pickups that I've been fortunate enough to try and spend a lot of time with over the years. I've tried a lot of different guitars and a lot of different pickups, and the perspectives that I present in this video are simply just byproducts of me having the freedom to learn, explore, and come to my own conclusions about those various pickups over my time as a guitar player. And just to make sure we're on the same page, this video is not titled Expensive Pickups Are Better. This video is simply showcasing why I believe that pickups do matter and why I believe that they do affect your guitar tone. These are my bare knuckle juggernaut pickups. These are also my bare knuckle juggernaut pickups. These are my bare knuckle juggernaut pickups. And these are also my bare knuckle juggernaut pickups. There's been so many new high gain metal focused pickups that have released since the bare knuckle juggernaut released in 2013, over 10 years ago. But after trying so many different pickups over the years, especially from the bare knuckle range, I always go back to those juggernauts in particular. I know exactly what they sound like. I know how tight the low end is. I know how pronounced that mid range is. I know exactly how they feel. I know that if I really dig into my guitar, I can get that super nice chug sound that I'm looking for. I know that they're super dynamic. I know exactly what to expect when I put them in a new guitar, just like I did with that gold one that I showed you before. I know them like the back of my hands so much so that they've definitely affected the front of them. I've been playing those pickups for so long and I'm 100% certain that they have altered the way that I physically play my guitars. If you've ever watched the channel before, you might associate my style of playing with, you know, picking really hard, trying to play really tight, um, and squeezing the dynamics out of the guitar. And I'm certain that all of those characteristics that are in my playing that you've watched and assessed over the years were brought out of me due to figuring out and falling in love with that exact pickup model because that's exactly what it offers. Being an instrumental progressive metal artist, this lends itself really nicely to my style of playing because I might be playing riffs all the way down here and then I gotta do some lead playing up here. I'll be switching styles up sometimes within the same piece of music. Those characteristics are definitely things that I strive for not only in my playing, but also my guitar tone. And the way that I physically play my guitars is basically adhering to the dynamic response and qualities that those pickups offer. And it's something that I've become very used to. That did not exist in my playing before playing these pickups for the first time. My playing style was very different. In my guitar playing journey, my biggest leaps and not only 
musicality, but technicality on the instrument definitely came around the ages of 15, 16, 17. This is where I really got into home recording. I started thinking a lot more critically about guitar tone and my guitar tone in particular. Um, and I started refining a lot of the skill sets that I already had at that point. This whole YouTube channel, all of my relevant social media, which then resulted into me releasing music as a solo artist, which has now resulted in me doing music as a full-time job, are direct byproducts of the revelations that I had all those years ago. And you can literally see that in the channel when you go back on the early videos. And as I practiced for hours, as I built up my right-hand technique, and as I pretty much became the guitar player that I am today, those bare knuckle juggernauts were with me all along. The way that those passive pickups were constructed, the way that I interact with them as a player has left an everlasting stamp on what I personally look for in a guitar tone. But how does that relate to actually changing the tone? Well, other than the very obvious aspect of how a guitar pickup looks like on a tonal spectrum and on an EQ graph, ways that this would alter my guitar tone over the years are much more involved and much more nuanced. Like I mentioned before, it's something that transcends the idea of just simply swapping pickups into the same guitar and the instantaneous kind of objectivity that that brings. The way that a pickup is made and constructed will ultimately affect how that pickup responds and how tight it feels, which as a player relates to things like how it feels under the hands, how hot the pickup is, how high output the pickup is, how dynamic the pickup is, which will then affect how a player physically plays the instrument, which will then affect the guitar player's guitar tone. Kind of alluded to this notion in my previous video where I made a big point to say how tone is in the hands. And what we're talking about now is a very in-depth kind of example of that notion. I stand here now or sit here now as a 24 year old guitarist who is heavily invested in passive pickups. I've tried a lot of the heavy hitter brands of active pickups over the years and personally, personally, I can't find the sound that I'm looking for out of those active pickups. And with bare knuckles being my point of reference, I'm yet to find ones that respond and sound like the bare knuckle pickups that I'm used to. When I first got this guitar, it didn't have this set of pickups in there. It had another brand of, you know, a really good quality active pickup. And for the life of me, I just could not get the sound that I was looking for out of this guitar. And I tried, I tried changing up my tones. I tried changing the response into the front of the amp. I just couldn't get the sound that I was looking for. But when I went ahead and put those passive pickups in there, I was almost blown away about how instant the difference was and how it felt to play underneath my hands. All of a sudden that like janky, heavy, like palm mute chugging sound that I really look for in my playing was just singing out of the guitar. To me, it didn't feel squashed anymore. It didn't feel like the dynamics were being compromised in any way. Um, it just felt right. And it happened not because, you know, bare knuckles or passive pickups, not because they're objectively better. That's not the point that I'm trying to make. The point that I'm trying to make is that it happened because I felt comfortable. Between those two sets of pickups, the way that I was physically playing the guitar was very much the same, but the sound that I was looking for, the sound that has grown up with me and altered my playing over the years was the sound that happened when I put those bare knuckles in there. And that was the sound that I was comfortable with. And again, it happened because I was comfortable. Now imagine me throwing a different set of pickups in all of these guitars. Pickups that I'm not comfortable with, pickups that I'm not used to playing, pickups that won't cater to my play style, pickups that have less output or maybe not as much wire wrapped around it or maybe the magnet isn't as strong, which will affect the resonant peak and that will be different. And then that will kind of alter my perception of how hard I'm picking and the pick attack and the power that I'm getting out of my hand. Any combination of the things that I just mentioned could alter my perception of the pickups and the sound that I think that I can get out of that instrument. It could then have a detrimental effect on my enjoyment of that guitar, which would then spill into how I feel recording of that guitar or dialing in tones of that guitar. I'd be forced to experiment and come up with new ways to cater to those you know, characteristics that I'm not used to, which I'm more than happy to do. I've done it a million times before, but the reality is, is that it would take me further away from that creative process of whether that be writing or recording, um, because I'd be too focused on trying to make the guitar sound the way that I imagine it to sound in my head, simply because it's not as comfortable as it could be to me, and it's not catering to the way that I physically play the instrument. That right there, that is exactly what is missing from the internet's discussion around guitar pickups. The idea that certain characteristics of certain pickups will affect how it feels to play that instrument, which will make you feel more or less comfortable playing that guitar, which is based on what you've grown up with or you know how you've developed as 
as a player over the years, which might then affect your morale surrounding that guitar and how you kind of look at recording that guitar and do you feel comfortable and do you feel good on that guitar. We can sit here and go through every single part of a guitar player signal chain and how it affects, you know, a EQ graph and the tone and, and all that stuff. But if you're not 100% comfortable using an instrument or using a piece of gear, how could you ever expect yourself to get a genuine performance out of it? Even if you're a mixing engineer or a producer, you know, getting other bands in, if you just hand them something that they're not used to and just go, oh, it doesn't matter, it all sounds the same. How can you expect them to give you a genuine take? Whether that be in studio like that example or even in a live setting, it directly correlates to how your hands move. Again, how you physically play the instrument, which in no doubt affects the tone that you get out of it. And it's as simple as that. The internet's almost like utter obsession with constantly compromising on things that make up our guitar tone is something that I've never wrapped my head around as a guitar player. Why are we always looking for shortcuts? Why are we always trying to underplay everything in our signal chains? This doesn't matter, or that doesn't make a huge difference, so it shouldn't matter at all. Like I said in my previous video, the most influential part of a guitar player's tone is the hands, is the player themselves. To suggest that that wouldn't have an effect on the final tone and how that comes across to a listener, that just sounds ridiculous. It feels like telling a painter that it doesn't matter what brushes that they use to paint, or maybe telling a footballer it doesn't matter what boots that they use on the pitch because all brushes paint and all boots kick and run. Beyond a certain point, just like brushes and boots, guitar pickups do cross that objective threshold of being good or bad. Things like the quality of the parts or the build quality or the quality control. But beyond that, it starts to then enter that subjective territory as to what feels good to use or what feels best to use for that individual. And again, I think that it would be ridiculous to suggest that it wouldn't affect a guitar player's confidence to use those tools to the best of their ability. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'd love to see and read genuine discussions, although this is the internet, so I'm not going to keep my hopes up. Thank you for watching.